Now, I know what you've all been waiting for. It isn't her passive. It isn't her constellations. It's this. Oh, does she move well? Yes, she does. Look at this. Look at this movement. Look how fast. Look how powerful. But watch this. With the ultimate, she can now do it on the water. This is incredible. This is the content we've been waiting for. She's incredible. Oh, shit. Ah! Hey everyone, MTAS here, and today I want to talk about Kokomi. I want to talk about how you should build her if you want to throw her on your team to get the maximum amount of value. Now there's going to be people out there that do 20,000 damage with her basic attacks, or they plop down her, her E ability and it's, it's hitting like a truck. It's going to happen because there's some whales out there with some cracked weapons and artifacts. I can just see it, but I cannot in good conscience recommend building her as a damage dealer, even though some of her constellations almost make her seem like she'd be a damage dealer or push her to, or maybe it's this one, push her to do some, some bursty damage based on her HP. I can't recommend building her that way because of one fatal flaw. And that is this juicy talent right here. She loses 100% crit rate. Now you can build crit rate. You can, you can get her to 5% crit rate. <laughs> you know, you can get a hundred percent crit rate on her and bring it up. But the amount of value she loses as a DPS character because of this is insane. You can use my, you know, free to play God gone you. She's got almost 100% crit rate with her passives and everything and 215% crit damage. So any damage that Kakomi is doing, she then needs to somehow hit 215% more to compete. And that is very, very tough. 215% more. She needs so much HP or base damage or something. I don't even understand how you could make up for that big of a deficit. Now, it doesn't mean she can't do damage because it's gonna be based off her HP. And so you can have cracked heals and you can have cracked damage if you're stacking a bunch of HP. But she's not going to shine and be your main DPS that is going to devastate the Spiral Abyss in my opinion. And even though you can definitely, you know, give her some damage, I feel like it is a waste of her passives, a waste of her skills, a waste of the way she was intended to be played. I think that she is great for passive DPS. I think she is great for passive healing. And I don't know how you would die as long as you're fighting within her healing rift and topping up while using her burst ability. But um, let's get into, you know, the, the way I see playing Kakoma. So... Number one, if you want to do some damage, you are going to need to level up her basic attack. While using her burst ability, this essentially just infuses her, her basic attacks so she does more damage and she's gonna start healing a bunch, okay? If you aren't building up this basic attack, it's gonna do nothing. It's gonna hit like trash. Okay, and so she does require a little bit more investment than other characters. That is something to consider. Her E ability. This is just passive area of effect Hydra damage. You can see it right here. I place this thing down and anywhere in this area of effect is going to be healing the character on the field as well as doing damage. It doesn't matter if you swap. It would heal up Jean. It would heal up Bennett. If you look at Bennett's ultimate here, kind of the same AOE. Like a... Like a I, I, my placement there is a little trash, I'm not gonna lie, but maybe the size of Ben's AoE, maybe even a little bit smaller, okay? And then her burst ability just infuses her uh, attacks, right? You can see here that she does get a lot of scaling off her HP, and this is gonna go up as you level up, right? And this, this jumps up pretty quickly. So if you've got 40,000 HP, which I think is very, very attainable, that's 4,000 damage or more right there. And this is a level one, right? Level two, we're, we're gonna start going up. This Her skill damage going up, normal attack, getting that 5%. That's pretty cool. And so if you do use a bunch of HP percent artifacts, uh, if you've got some flat HP and stuff, you can start chunking into the thousands here every time you're using your skill or doing any sort of basic or charged attack. I mean, it, it does add up for sure, but also this HP uh, regeneration is going to go up as well based on that HP. So it's a win-win. Both the things she's supposed to do, she's going to be doing very well. And all you have to do is stack some HP on her, which I think, you know, if you're using all these trash artifacts that might be hanging around with HP percentage, you can get that up pretty damn quickly. Uh, a lot of those filler pieces that you might have, perfect. So the investment for artifacts, it might be really low for your account. However, that being said, for your boy M Tashed, my artifacts are non-existent that have HP percentage other than maybe a couple because I trashed those things long ago. I don't have a bunch of HP percentage helmets. I don't have a bunch of HP percentage cups. I don't have anything on set and I would have to farm tremendously. And so if you aren't set up for success, you don't have a bunch of maiden sets set up because maybe you were hunting the Verdescent set, well, then it's gonna take a ton of investment to get her going properly. Think about Kazuha who might need a bunch of elemental mastery and how hard it can be to get a bunch of elemental mastery. Well, you're just doing the same thing, but now it's HP percentage. This is filler pieces that maybe you weren't using, but if you don't have them, it's still a very specific grind to get them. So 
uh, something to definitely consider. Now there's a couple sets I can see working with her. One of them being the Maiden set because it's giving you this healing bonus, which then actually translates to damage because of her passive. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, when using your elemental skill or burst, you get more healing. So if you wanna be the perfect healer, never ever have someone die. The Maiden set is gonna be for you, but I think that there are some other really, really good options uh, for Kakomi based on how her abilities work. So let's take a peek at that. So the Milleless set, uh, I think is a really good option. Increases your HP by 20%, so banger right there, giving you more damage and healing. But this one is interesting because you can have pretty much 100% uptime uh, of her elemental skill. When an elemental skill hits an opponent, the attack of all nearby party members is increased by 20%, and their shield strength is increased by 30%. Now, you can't really do sh shield strength unless you're using a separate shield character, but the attack percentage you can get. This is a set that it can work, and maybe you have a good one because you find one for Jean Lee. Maybe you have one for Diona, I'm not sure. But the uptime on this is pretty much 100% because every time you use your burst ability, it resets your E. So you could make this work if you got a good one. Beautiful. But you can also do a mix set, which in some cases might even be better. This is giving you a 20% bonus uh, to your HP, which is a huge amount of HP to get. And then you could use two piece of the Maiden set for the healing bonus. And so that might make it even easier to mix and match, which is really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna get much better than that. Now, uh, <laughs> in the test run, it's got Heart of the Depth. It's got this Hydro set. It's got Hydro Damage bonus. You're getting bonus damage for this. I don't know if I can recommend that. I mean, it, it will definitely give you some damage, but again, you don't have crit damage. You, you just, you don't have crit damage. So I, I don't know if I can recommend building her as a damage dealer. Um, I guess because she does do some passive damage with the hydro damage bonus, uh, you know, the, the jellyfish is going to do a little bit more, but... For me, I would want Kakomi to keep me alive more than anything, and that's what I would personally uh, work with. Now, if someone comes out with some cracked build that I, you know, I've never seen and they're doing millions of damage, go check it out. You know, listen to them. But <laughs> for me, I'm looking at her options, and I don't see uh, I don't see a lot of hype there in the artifacts, other than oh, yeah, kind of passive stuff uh, your team can get. Now, as for a weapon, Rose Type Amber, uh, this gives you an option here. This is HP percentage, which is great. It's a four-star weapon, so you're going to get a little bit more scaling. But look at this. Using an elemental burst regenerates four energy every two seconds for six seconds. That's pretty cool, because that's going to give you a nice, you know, you can always have uptime on your burst ability. The only issue with that is if you always have your burst ability, Kakomi needs to stay on the field a whole bunch. And and if you're not healing and she can't do the most damage on your team, do you want to be on the field in her burst? The answer for me is no. So is this energy recharge overkill? I don't know. I personally only want her on the field to heal up my team. Now, you're also getting this passive where you're regenerating 4% HP every two seconds, and this is for all party members. Here's the thing is now I need to be on the field even less because this is giving me passive healing. So uh, I'm just... Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about Prototype Amber. There's another option that I think oh, yeah, people dude. need to consider. The Railing Tails. The Railing Tails, base HP, perfection. You can refine this thing up. It's going to give you some base attack, perfection. You can swap to her, do her thing, heal it up, and then swap back to your DPS. Thrilling Tails is cracked. They can give you 48% uh, increased attack just from going to Kakomi, healing up, and swapping. And I understand that the base attack is going to be lower. She might not do as much damage, but I think that this will make up for it. And this is a low investment option. Now, the other thing... <sighs> You know, I, you know, the other thing I gotta bring up is you could also do a very similar thing with Barbara. And so, you know, I have a whole rant video about Kakomi. I don't want to, I don't want to rant about it because, you know, this is a video about using her well if you have her. But Barbara can also use this, heal you like that, and swap off. And so that's something to consider. Is Kakomi can be a bit of a, 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 a bit of a DPS loss or maybe neutral ground. Now, the fix to all of our problems, a five-star healing weapon. No, I'm just kidding. If you get this weapon, what are you doing? Stop, please stop. Please do not wail for her weapon. I don't know how to say this, but yes, it's got HP percentage. We got some base attack. It's got more healing bonus and you're gonna get some max HP, right? Some extra damage, I get it, okay? There's a lot of, there's a lot of value here. I, I cannot recommend this ever to anyone. Under any circumstance, if you happen to get Kakomi and you happen to be going for Jade Cutter and you get this, make do. Obviously use it if you have it, but I will not recommend this. I, I, I cannot in good conscience recommend it, even though it obviously does a great job at what it's supposed to be. It obviously fits in very well for her. It's kind of like a Staff of Homa, you know, type value because you're getting the healing bonus, which 
gives you damage. Uh, your normal attacks are getting some extra damage, which you're gonna do all the time while in your burst, and you're also doing this energy. So like, yeah, it's great, but come on, guys, this is hundreds of dollars. All right, this is, this is a lot of money for a character that I think there's very comparable four stars. You can see I'm kind of condescending this. I apologize, I'm trying not to be biased, but let's think a little. Now there's also a rumor that the Favonius Codex is really good for her. Stop, you cannot crit, so you cannot do this. I don't know who's saying this. <laughs> Get this thing out of my inventory. You can't crit, it's impossible to use passive. Who's saying this? That's got to be the biggest bait I've ever seen. Now, it does have energy recharge, but just, just stop, okay? The other one that uh, I, I don't think I can recommend is the, uh, is this bad boy here. The Sacrificial Fragments. This is Elemental Mastery, which isn't going to help you out a ton. And this does reset your elemental skill. But because of how her burst works, you should have 100% uptime anyways. So you shouldn't need this. You won't need this. It's kind of like Fischl. She can always have Oz on the field. You don't You don't need Sacrificial Fragments. It's not gonna do much for you. So there you go. I'll give you some artifacts. I'll give you some weapons. She's fine. She's fine. Um, but this is the best I can do. This is as far as I go. If you got her, have fun with her, okay? Have fun with her. Let's just look at where she can shine, okay? I, I don't have an answer for that because she doesn't shine. She doesn't shine anywhere. She is pretty. Pretty useless. So I'm gonna be upfront with you. Talents are not leveled up. Her damage is not gonna be good. But one thing you could consider doing, uh, especially if you don't have someone like Xing Chou, is uh, because she's passively doing this constantly, uh, you could use someone like a Diluc, but you might notice that, oh, stop! Ah! You might not vaporize every single hit. You might get a, a, a few, uh, you know, reverse vaporizes. It's not the best. It's not the best, but it can work. It's doable. However, uh, Raiden Shogun, same thing. You can get a lot of electro charge going off here. And if you're doing these different attacks, you can even do some sort of taser comp. Uh, Mona could do a pretty similar thing though, so I'm just I'm not sure if I if I if I love that. But it's it's possible. It's it's possible. You can make her work for sure. <laughs> for sure. Another thing you could consider is uh, some kind of perma freeze comps. Even with just a basic attack, uh, there's multiple characters in the game you could permanently freeze. Is this gonna do the most damage ever? Hey! You're supposed to be frozen! Uh, you can also use some, some Rosaria action. Maybe you use both. Uh, you could also maybe throw some Shangling in here. Uh, that's definitely some potential. I'll show you that in just a second. You can't attack me if you're frozen, right? <laughs> now, uh, it is true. It is true that you could do this with, you, can't run. you know, any other Hydro character in the game. But you you can do it with Kakomi. So, so that is a fact. All right. Passive. Some Klee Bombs. Okay, no HP. That's okay, because look at this healing. This is a level one heal. Look at that. No problem. We're vaporizing. Sheesh, this is incredible. You think I'm done? Oh, what's this? Constant vaporizes? Oh, it's, it's this is just freaking wild. Although I just realized I'm reverse vaping. I'm reverse vaping. That is the last thing we want. Okay, so maybe maybe this isn't working out. I'm gonna be 100% with you. The more I test her, the less I can recommend her. I know I'm supposed to be positive, but again, maybe you didn't see the last video and, and you're looking for insight on this character. My insight is I'm skipping and I've never recommended skipping more than today. I'm sorry, I, I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you. You can make her work if you already got her. Maybe you don't know anything about the game you just started. You got her, you wanna see what it do. I've given you some recommendations and you can make her work, but I'm not gonna pretend that she is the end all be all God mode character. I, I just can't do it. That's it, the end of the video. I, I, I have to move on because, uh, or else I'm gonna start ranting. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. She's the worst character I've ever seen.